Basically, what you want to do is take all the essential nutrients. 60, that's 6O minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, and 3 essential fatty acids. And they're called essential nutrients for two reasons. Number one, your body cannot manufacture them. You must consume these every day, either as food or as supplements. Number two, if any one of these essential nutrients is missing for a couple of months, a couple of years, you get on the average 10 deficiency diseases. You have everything to gain, nothing to lose by supplementing properly. Well, the medical profession, of course, has this malignant dumb belief that you can get everything you need from your four food groups. My favorite article of all time in the press was uh, April 6, 1992, Time Magazine, cover article, The Real Power of Vitamins, New Research Shows It May Help Fight Cancer, Heart Disease, and the Ravages of Aging. Six positive pages. If you haven't read it, I'd urge you to go to a public library, school library, dig it out and read it. There was only one negative sentence, and as you might guess, it was offered by a medical doctor who was actually uh, uh, contacted by the writer of the article said, what do you think about vitamins and minerals and, and trace minerals as supplements for human nutrition? Here's what he said, quote, popping vitamins doesn't do you any good, sniffs Dr. Victor Herbert, a professor of medicine at New York City's Mount Sinai Medical School. We get all the vitamins we need in our diets and taking supplements just gives you expensive urine, unquote. Now Missouri translation of that is you're just peeing away your money. You might as well wad up your dollars, throw them in a toilet, and flush them away. You can get everything you need from your four food groups, is what he's trying to say. Well, I'd rather pee out 50 cents or a dollar a day worth of excess vitamins and minerals. That's cheap insurance. Think about it. How much money you spend for coffee or soft drinks or newspapers and that kind of stuff every day. 50 cents to a dollar a day to maintain and repair your body. And it's kind of fascinating that most people don't do it. Just remember, when you pay that doctor out of your own pocket, or indirectly through insurance, or indirectly through taxes and Medicare, Medicaid, not a single penny of that goes to better understand, manage, treat, prevent, or cure catastrophic diseases in kids, breast cancer in women, prostate cancer in men. Now, a lot of people ask me, why did you call your original tape Dead Doctors Don't Lie? Well, that's because I, I believed for a long time, because I'd done medical research for over 20 years in large medical research institutes, medical schools, the various laboratories, and I always had a belief in the medical system, but I was very disappointed when I learned that doctors don't know the most about health and longevity. Doctors don't know the most about disease. They do know about procedures, you know, how to fix your bones when you break them and that sort of thing, how to do a CAT scan. And so I began to look in the medical journals and sure enough, the first article ever published on health and longevity of American doctors was published in JAMA on June 15th, 1895, a little over 100 years ago. They said at that time doctors lived to be 546 I redid the study 97 years later using the same obituary techniques that uh, they did in JAMA. This was um, January 20th, 1993, in that particular issue of JAMA, and it turned out uh, the doctors uh, lived to be 57.6. I rounded up to 58 to give them the benefit of the doubt, and doctors just went berserk when I said that. I mean, this was the most outrageous thing that they ever heard. My principle is, my, my premise is, that doctors don't live as long as the average couch potato in America. And I purposely put that figure out there at 58 to try and challenge people. Well, doctors immediately looked at all the insurance actuarial charts. They got 250,000 dead doctors. They said, your group's too small. So they looked at 250,000 dead doctors and they say, doctors don't live to be 58, they die at 62. They still don't live to be 75.5 like the average couch potato. We actually uh, re-ran this again uh, using the entire obituary history for 1996. And for the entire 1996, of all the doctors dying in 1996, with all the medical treatments and drugs and, and procedures and everything, and transplants, doctors and in that study lived to be 70. Still five and a half years short of the average couch potato in America. So they still have never proven that doctors live as long as everybody else, and that's why dead doctors don't lie. <laughs>